Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rum and Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about putting the accessory case, which is where the gears on your engine are located, and the oil sump. A uh, viewer commented that we kind of glazed over that kind of quickly in the video of the engine install, and that's because we had a fixed camera and on shop time. But anyway, we're going to look at the intricacies of putting all your gears together and getting the sump on the case and then that will complete all the knowledge of, of uh, reassembling an engine in this case a Lycoming IO 360 A4K and then you finally get to the point where you're ready to go hang it on the airplane but let's look at the other parts and so we would like to ask you please subscribe hit the like button and hit the notify to stay current with our content We now assemble the connecting rods with the correct bearings, the size needed for the crankshaft. A crankshaft can be reground to minus tolerances rather than being replaced. This must then be accommodated by correctly matching the bearings. The connecting rods and crankcase are numbered, and you always keep the corresponding numbers together, 1 to 1, 2 to 2, etc. We now see why we originally spoke of mounting the crankshaft vertically for purposes of visualizing the final assembly. The vertical mounting and raised numbers are both aids in this visualization process. The connecting rods are assembled on the crankshaft with the numbers away from where the camshaft will be and toward the sump side. We now lubricate the bearing areas, the thrust surfaces, and the threads. We now face the crankshaft and orient it so the lower or number one piston is extended to what would be called top dead center or full firing position. By being in this position, the rest of the engine will sequence easily as we proceed. We now assemble with the IO360. Bolts are not torqued, they're stretched, tightened until they reach a specific length. We now address the gear section. Gear idler shafts are positioned and lock plates are put on for safety. They're torqued and then, to prevent bolts from loosening and possibly slipping into the engine, the ends are bent up. Galley plugs are now installed. We now position the gears. We must reference back to the number one cylinder which we want extended to top dead center. This is because we want the crankshaft to be timed to the camshaft. This allows the valves to operate properly depending on where the piston is in the cylinder. We extend the number one cylinder, we locate the timing marks on the camshaft, those two dots there, and we locate the timing marks on the crankshaft gear. The timing gear drives the camshaft, drives the magneto, and has an eccentric, a cam, which drives the fuel pump. The timing gear has marks which we match to the camshaft and crankshaft timing marks. We match everything and the timing gear falls into place. The next gear turns the magneto and while it is similar to the preceding timing gear in that it has timing marks, it's not timed to anything else so the marks are of no consequence. This is the tachometer drive shaft. It's attached to the camshaft. The tachometer cable will be attached to connect it to the instrument panel where it will tell you the engine's RPMs, revolutions per minute. It's held in by a snap ring. Be sure to rotate the snap ring opening 90 degrees to the tack pin opening. Again, we never allow openings to line up. This is your oil pump. It consists of the housing and two impellers with a drive shaft. These are assembled. Use of a heavy lubricant is important here for the initial priming of the system. This oil pump assembly is attached to the internal side of the accessory housing by means of three castle nuts and three plane washers which are torqued to the manufacturer's specifications and safety wired. When joined, the protruding shaft engages the crank gear. A seal is applied to the tachometer drive shaft housing. Next, we install the fuel pump push rod, which is needed to drive the fuel pump lever. The accessory housing now gets an accessory housing gasket. Use a sealant recommended by the manufacturer. Now all the gears and shafts are lubricated. Now as you're ready to position the accessory housing, you want to be sure that the drive shaft is aligned with the crankshaft gear that will be driving it. By holding the shaft in position with your hand under, guide the housing on, 
and with this for basic alignment, shift it slightly until the whole unit seats itself, sort of snapping into place. Never seat this by screwing down the bolts. Anything more than light tapping would suggest something's out of line or incorrect. Don't force anything. At this point, put the housing bolts in and torque them to the manufacturer's settings, and do it in the correct sequence. We're now ready to attach the oil sump. The oil sump is a large unitized piece that has air manifold tubes that allow air induction and lead to where the fuel servo will be. The body will contain the engine oil. When the sump is fitted to the crankcase, you can see that splash oil will flow over the gears we've lubricated, providing for their ongoing lubrication. A small hole in the sump allows for placement of a pre-pump oil screen tube. This is a filter which precedes the oil pump. Bolts are torqued to the specifications and in the recommended order. The prop governor tube attaches from the prop governor pad to a fitting in the crankcase. V-nuts are tightened and hold it in place with several braces. This engine can take an oil screen or an oil filter. The oil filter spin-on adapter is easily attached. It gets a gasket, is adjusted to position, bolted and torqued to specifications. The adapter has two inputs. One is for a temperature probe which operates the oil temperature gauge on the instrument panel. The other opening houses a Vernatherm bypass valve. This thermostatically self-operated valve exposes a hole to the oil cooling system. When the Vernatherm heats up, it expands and covers the hole, allowing oil to flow through the oil cooling system. This is a simple mechanical system which cannot be worked on or adjusted. When it no longer works, it's thrown out and replaced. The Vernatherm is simply screwed in and safety wired. We've now come to the vacuum pump drive adapter housing. The vacuum pump, which is outside the scope of this tape, is driven by this drive and creates vacuum necessary for the operation of some of the gauges on the instrument panel. The housing gets an oil seal, a thrust washer, which prevents it from eating itself, and the drive gear. They fit to each other and are then positioned through the gear housing to be driven by the rotation of the camshaft. The unit will seat itself and can only go in one way. A small internal oil passage allows oil to lubricate the shaft while it's in operation. There is also a small protruding pin which guides correct positioning. Don't force anything. The oil pressure relief valve is now screwed into position. This valve is a spring-loaded ball. The spring holds the ball against the camphored relief hole. Excess pressure pushes the ball off the opening and allows the pressure to be relieved. You can create any pressure relief level you want by using various combinations of washers and springs. Your manufacturer's guide will tell you how to do this. The valve is screwed in with a crush washer and safety wired. The oil pressure fitting is now installed. The dipstick housing is now screwed into the crankcase. It's fitted with a gasket and safety wire. An O-ring seals the upper stick end of the housing, which is applied when the engine is installed. This is the stage at which we generally paint the engine. Over time, we've developed high-tech methods of protecting the internal engine from splattered paint. Be creative. You'll find the means to block all the engine openings. We've now reached the point of installing the cylinders. Reconditioning cylinders especially work requiring special skills and equipment. We don't cover that here. When the engine was dismantled, the cylinders were refurbished. The guides, seats, and valves have been replaced and clearances reset to the manufacturer's specifications and tolerances. They also have been repainted. You can now check the cylinders. Check piston skirt size to the barrel clearance. Cylinders and pistons are separate pieces and both come in oversizes. We remove the ring and insert it into the cylinder to make sure that the ring gap, where the ring ends butt, is to the manufacturer's tolerance. Rings are then replaced correctly with the numbers up. We're now ready to assemble. An O-ring sits at the base of the cylinder as an oil seal. If your IO360 has a cooling nozzle, this is the point at which it is installed. It is screwed in and torqued. 
The piston is symmetrical and can go in rotationally up or down. We've numbered each piston so that with any engine work, the same piston will go back into the same cylinder in the same position, anticipating avoiding any individual cylinder characteristics or quirks causing changes during wear. We now put in a full floating wrist pin which is held in or centered by wrist pin plugs. These plugs may protrude at times and touch the cylinder walls, but not to the detriment of the engine. The cylinders are now ready to be positioned. Care is taken to rotate the ring brake gaps approximately one-third of a turn off of each other. This, again, is just an added precaution to eliminate a direct path of escape for exhaust gas from the cylinder. A ring compressor compresses the rings to allow them to slide easily into position. So, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you found all this useful and informative looking at the accessory gear case and the sump going back on and finishing up with the cylinders. Thanks for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman. And Freckles, our cat supervisor, and we'd like to introduce the new cats to you. We have Hopscotch there on the left. The other small ginger is Tarzan. He came with that name, and his sister will be popping up in just a second, and her name is Sweet Pea. These are the new cats that we've adopted into our home. It's going to be a nice little family, and we're having a ball. Thanks for watching.